Whenever we want to introduce new technology into education or into learning or into the workplace, there's often a little bit of resistance or a little bit of caution. And a little bit of caution is not a bad thing. We want to make sure that we do things intentionally and we don't just chase the latest, greatest, shiny object. But when it comes to AI in education, there are five persistent myths about AI in education that I see coming up all the time. And they are myths, they're not true. In this video, we'll take a look at those five myths and we'll look at what's really happening when it comes to AI in education. Hi, I'm Frank from Learning and Technology with Frank. And on this channel, we look at how we can use technology to learn and teach more effectively. How we can use technology as leverage so that we can be better teachers and better learners. Myth number one when it comes to using AI in education is that it's too hard. And I can understand why it might seem that way to someone who's just starting to explore it. You hear about things like prompt engineering and you think of, and you hear about things like AI hallucinating. So it comes across like you might need to learn all sorts of new skills just to start taking advantage of AI. And you know, that might be true if you're using certain types of AI. But when it comes to education and learning, we can use purpose-built tools. We can use AI solutions that don't require us to do prompt engineering, that don't require us to learn how to speak to the AI in a special way to get the results that we want. We can use tools like magicschool.ai, which is designed for educators and students so I can generate rubrics and lesson plans. I can generate activities and quizzes. I can do all sorts of things with the tool without having to worry about designing prompts in order to get what I want. It's all there designed for me. And I can also use tools like uh, eduade.ai. Very similar to magicschool.ai, it offers even more ability for me to go through and, and create ob different types of educational resources that I might want. Both of them together are fantastic. I tend to use them both. And the nice thing about these tools is they're actually quite economical. There's free plans, so you can go for free. And even if you upgrade to the pro plans, it's, it's quite reasonable for a, for a yearly cost or even a monthly cost. We can use tools to do research like Answer This. It's a wonderful tool that does deep research, generates uh, literature reviews, does a lot of the background of finding articles and PDFs and providing references for me. So that's a wonderful tool. I have some dedicated videos here on the channel about Answer This. And then tools that we can use that, that make things like generate courses like eSkilled Course Creator. Uh, there's a lot of tools that we can use to generate content for education. And many of the tools that we're used to using, like uh, course design tools like iSpring, will allow us to use AI in order to create better results using their tools. And this goes for almost every tool out there, like Genially and uh, Canva. All of the tools today either have AI built into them or they're dedicated AI tools that are purpose built for education, making it as easy as going to a website and asking for what you want, as opposed to having to learn prompt engineering or a new way of speaking to your computer. Myth number two when it comes to using AI in education is that it takes too much time to learn. Nothing could be further from the truth. AI is a huge, huge time saver. Once you're familiar with some of the tools that you can use to generate content for your classroom, for your teaching, or for your studying, you'll see that you can generate a prompt that can build something that would manually take hours and hours of time in order to create or to research. If you're an instructor and you want to create an activity and a game or, an act or something for your students to do, you can use AI to generate it in a very short period of time. You can then spend your time making sure that it's exactly a good match for your class and making sure that you deliver that value to your students in an exciting and dynamic way. If you're a student, you can generate study guides on topics that you're still learning because the AI can give you appropriate questions to help you build your knowledge. You don't need the knowledge in order to learn the knowledge. AI will actually generate and help you generate a pathway to learning. That's absolutely fantastic. 
So taking a little bit of time to learn what's available to you. You can even watch videos here on this channel on some of the topics and it'll help you save time. It doesn't take too much time. Myth number three of using AI in education is that AI will replace teachers. And this is a big one. I, I see a lot of different things happening when it comes to AI and education. And I think this is probably the, the biggest myth and the biggest fear about AI in the educational space. Now, there are some experiments that are going on where they're using AI in some schools to guide students through material without the use of a teacher. I personally think that that's going to end up in disaster. If you have the perfect student that's self-motivated and has specific skills that they're trying to achieve, then AI can certainly help them with self-efficacy and the ability for them to develop their own educational objectives. That, that's valid, but it won't replace teachers. You see, there used to be a time where teaching was just information exchange. Well, it never was information exchange, but where a larger portion of teaching was information exchange. Teachers held information, they gave that to the students, and then once the students had the information, teachers would do the higher level teaching tasks. Things like critical thinking, creative synthesis of the information, and all of the things to motivate students to embrace the learning. Then what happened is we of course had libraries, they didn't replace teachers, even, they, even though they were vast warehouses of information. Just because we consolidated the information didn't replace teachers. Then we had the internet with search engines, so we could bring the information to us no matter where we were geographically. That didn't replace teachers. It just made the information easier to retrieve and to work with. And with AI, it's my belief that AI adds another dimension which is synthesizing the information once it is retrieved. But that's still not teaching. That's still not learning. Synthesis of information is the step that is just before true learning, which is motivation and creative and critical application of the synthesized information towards a purpose towards understanding, towards being able to interact with the world, whether it's applied education or whether it's education that is more uh, traditional. I think that AI will help with synthesis of information, but teachers are still required in order to provide purpose. AI can't provide purpose. In the same way that reading a book can change your life because it allows you to think in new ways, it's only when you think in those new ways and compare and contrast and gain from the experience of others that you truly are educating yourself. So I think that the fear that AI will replace teachers is naive because I don't think it really takes into consideration what teachers actually do. Teachers can use AI to help the process of teaching, but teachers will always be required to teach. Myth number four when it comes to using AI in education is that it's not ethical or it's not safe. And this one is a little bit tricky because like many tools, you can use it in unethical ways and you can use it unsafely if you do not use it properly. I think this is really where using those purpose-built tools is very, very wise because if you use something like magicschool.ai or eduade.ai that are designed for the educational market, then you have a lot of safety features built in, in terms of data collected, in terms of the content generated. And when it comes to ethical use of any tool, that's really where we want to look at what sort of policies do we have in place and does the tool support adherence to those policies. The classic example here would be if I'm going to implement a tool, an AI tool in my school, is it something that's going to be collecting data on my students? We don't want that. Is it something that allows me to manage what's collected? It allows me to, is it a tool that allows me to manage whether or not uh, history is stored, chat history? So it's really not the tool itself that is either non-ethical or has features that might compromise uh, safety. It's the way that we implement the tool and the way that we use it in our environment. And this is very critical. I think really the best way to work with an ethical and safe AI environment 
is to look at those purpose-built tools and to go into those tools in conjunction with your ethics board and in conjunction with your, your academic departments and talk about what does it mean to be ethical and safe in your environment and does the tools that the tool or tools that you're selecting, do they support adherence to the ethical and safety standards of your organization? AI itself is just the tool. It is not inherently unethical or unsafe. It can be used for non-ethical behavior or unsafe behavior, but if we use it in an ethical, safe way, we get a lot of benefits from it. So it's, a, it's very important that we do take that into consideration. Myth number five when it comes to using AI in education is that it won't work for my grade or my specific subject area. And this really comes down to the thought that AI has to do everything, and it doesn't. You can use just the appropriate amount of AI for the appropriate levels that you need it for. For example, in kindergarten, there's a lot of human reaction. You want a lot of you, a human reaction between the teacher and the kids. AI is not going to replace that. What AI can do though, is maybe have a fun little story starter, or maybe AI can create a fun little activity or a silly little song for the kindergarten kids. That would be a good use of AI at that level. If you start getting into grade school, it might be something where you can generate different versions of an exam or different versions of an activity to help those students that are struggling, to help those students that want to get ahead. So you can tailor your, your delivery of the materials that you have to suit multiple students and meet them where they're at. When you start getting into trade schools, you can start looking at how AI can help solidify concepts that are then used for the hands-on practical applications that they're learning. There is a lot of use of AI that doesn't replace an entire grade level or subject area, but supports your teaching and learning in that grade level or subject area. I've yet to really find a subject that AI doesn't have at least something to offer. Everything from accessibility and special education to advanced research to kindergarten, all the way through the entire educational system, AI does have a way to help synthesize, create, and allow you to do your job as an instructor or if you're a student, help you learn more effectively. The unfortunate thing about these five myths of using AI in education is they can sometimes move us towards inaction rather than embracing a tool that can be very useful when used properly. And to use AI properly does require a little bit of effort. I'm actually working on a course on AI for educators. I'll put a link down below if you'd like to be notified when that course is available. And here on this channel, I have a lot of different videos on all sorts of technology and how we can use it for teaching and learning more effectively. So check out some of the other videos on the channel. Thank you so much for watching this video. If it was useful, hit the like button, subscribe for more videos, and we'll see you in the next one.